Hello YouTube, Sebastian here and welcome to another Game Mega tutorial-ish thing. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made this inventory system. I won't be coding it with you this time. I might do that if you want to. I can totally do one where we code it together. But this time, I'm just going to go through all the code that is for it because it's not a lot. And I just figured it would be a shorter video and you can just watch what I've written on screen. Modify it yourself and... Uh, do whatever you want with it so yeah this is what you can see here this is the inventory so we have a little arrow I'm pointing at the screen but you can't see I, you can see I can move it up and down and it loops around so you can go all the way to the top and it will go down the bottom and then I can hit enter and a random item will be put into this um, inventory and as you can see the uh, the stick can stack up to five times the sort potions can stack to four times Swords can only stack once because they're unstackable. So it has features like stacks. And as you can see, when it's full, and I try to add another one, it says inventory is full. Then I can use which would which one was it? Shift. Yeah, that's the one I binded it to. Sorry, but if I use shift, I can use items if they have a use. So you can see swords has no use, sticks no use, but potions they add ten to this here. So that's like the health or something. That's just to um, like uh, visualize it so you can see I can just get 10 and when it when you've used all the items it returns to zero you can drop items if I can yeah spacebar so I can drop items and then of course new items will be added in so that's pretty neat and that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do so this is what it can do it can use items pick up items and remove items so this is the uh, the object. Let's go into the create event here, and uh, can can I zoom in on the text here? Yeah, we can make it bigger. There we go. So now you can definitely see this text. Yeah, everything changed. Okay, so in here, um, this is just the create event. So let's go through it. The first one is. The item script now I'm gonna go through after but first of all this inventory works by having two arrays running parallel to each other so I have an inventory array and an amount array so these are parallel to each other so amount zero and inventory zero that inventory zero will be the item in that inventory and amount zero will then be the amount of items that are in that inventory so first of all I make a for loop that says variable i equals to zero and as long as i is less than 10 I will go up and then I'm gonna set the inventory at i so zero through nine and I'll set all of those to no one because we're gonna have no item in them and I'm gonna set the amount to zero so this will basically give us 10 inventory slots you can modify this number as how many you want then I have a variable for the position this is for like the uh, choosing items and stuff so that's the position one and then I have an HP variable just as you saw for the potions so next up we have the draw event in here I'm just drawing some uh, drawing that will uh, draw the items actually I think we're going to do that at last because we want to do the item script so this item script right here I'm going to show you this one this uses a uh, this I actually made it a global array you don't actually have to do that if it's in the same object I don't know I just did that I don't know it is, isn't actually necessary for this but I just sometimes like to have stuff like uh, these are all the items I like to have them global so everybody can access the items that might be nice so I have an enum for all the different items so we have sword that's item ID number zero potion has one stick has two is that how that works so the item right here is also the ID then we have the stats for the item, so the name, which you can see sword, that's what we're going to use to display what item is in the inventory. Then we have the max stack size, which if you want them to be unstackable, you just put in one, and then there can only be one in one in a stack. And otherwise you can just put it as high as you want. And then I have the use, which is whatever script you want to run whenever you want to use an item. So you can either either set to no one. Or whatever other value you want or a script in this case so the potion I made a heal script that whenever you use it it's gonna execute that script and the potion will heal so 
the way this is set up, now it's just a two-dimensional array. We have global.inventory A or inventory array. That's what this stands for. And then we have item.sort, which is zero, comma, item stat, item name, so that's zero. So we have the name, the max stack size, and the use. So that's basically it for the items. Uh, you can, of course, this is for a very simple inventory. If you want to expand upon this, you definitely can and add more item stuff. Like you might have a, a cooldown on the item. So you, you'll just, what you'll do then is just write in here, just do a cooldown. And then add another line here with the item stat dot cooldown for each one of these and set that one. So that's basically how easy that is to do. But this initializes all the items and that's actually what we're running right here, the item script. Um, so that's it. So you want to add more items, you just add the name of the item up here and you just copy one of these and just put them in, fill it out, easy as that. Then next up, right here, let's go with the, p okay, next up, the key press, this one. I assign this one to enter the add item script, which is this one. And what this script will do is, in this case, it just chooses a random item, 0, 1, and 2, which is sort of 0, 1 is potion, and 2 is stick, as I said before. So these just chooses a random item ID. Then what it does is, first of all, it has a for loop right here. This for loop, what it does is, it goes through all of the inventory from 0 to 10, or 0 to 9 actually, not 10. And then it checks, first of all, if the inventory like the current like uh, inventory position that we are at, if that equals the ID that we randomly chosen before, if it does equal that, that means it's the same item. So next, we want to check if that item is stackable. So if it has a max stack size of bigger than one, so what I do here is I say if global dot inventory a add item. So let's say we chose zero. So it'll be at zero, then I and it'll check if item stacked of max size is bigger than one. So it'll go to this array here and it'll see zero, and that's the item sort. The max stack size that's only one, so it'll see it's not bigger than one, and it'll actually just skip this and uh, continue. But if it were bigger than one, it would go in here and then it would check if the amount in that inventory slot is less than the max stack size because we don't want to exceed it. Then we're going to add one to the amount and exit out of the script because we don't want to check for any more items. We don't want it to roll through the rest of the list and we definitely don't want it to check for an empty spot. So, and that's what we're actually doing right down here because if we don't exit right here, first of all, if you had, didn't have this exit, it would roll through um, all of the items from zero to nine. So if more items had the same item ID, it would be added to all of them. So that's why we have the exit here. That makes sure that when we added an amount to one item, the first one we encounter, we're going to exit and do nothing more. But if we don't find an item that is stackable, so if it isn't uh, stackable, and if we didn't add an amount, then we'll go to this part here where we just look for an empty item and put the item in here. So this one again loops through the whole inventory from 0 to 9 and then it checks if the inventory at i equals no one so if it's empty because we set it right here in the create event we set them to no one that means it's empty so if it is no one then the inventory at that position will equal the item and the amount at that position will equ uh, will uh, increase as well by one and then we'll exit out again so if we find one that's free we're going to populate it and then we're going to exit out and otherwise, if we get to the bottom of this script, it'll just show inventory is full. You can do whatever. You can remove this if you want to. You can make it run some other code, whatever. So that's it. Next up, we have the drop item. So this one will have um, if. So this one checks. Actually, to do this one, Let's do the another one first because I just want to explain how the position works. So I have these two key presses right here, up and down. So we have the position variable before that equals zero. So this one's we use that to uh, cycle through. So zero will be the top inventory slot and nine will be the bottom one. 
So that's what we use the precision for to access one through nine. So basically, if you press down, the precision will increase by one, so it it will become one and then two and three and so forth and so on. And then after it added one, it checks if the position is bigger than nine. So if we get to the position ten, that's outside of the um, of the inventory length. Then we're just going to set position equal to zero, so it'll jump back to the top. And the reverse thing is happening in the uh, upwards direction. So we're going to subtract, and if it's lower than zero, then we're going to set it to nine. So that's how the position works. So then drop item. This one checks. If the inventory at our position, so let's say position 0 or 3 or whatever, if that equals no one, or if it does not equal no one, sorry, so if there's an item in that inventory slot, then it's going to subtract 1 from the amount at that position, and then it's going to check if the amount is equal to 0. So if we hit 0, then the inventory at position will equal no one, because there's no more amount, there's no more items in there so we make sure to uh, set the ID of that inventory slot to no one and you can actually do less than or equal to zero because if you later add the ability to remove more than one item you might want to check for if it's less than or equal to zero because then if you get a minus three it'll still um, remove the ID from that item or from that inventory position next up we have the use item this one is a bit a um, bit more complex, it's really not that weird, but I'm going to try and explain, it's a little bit weird, I'm going to try and explain as best I can. So first of all, it's basically an extension of the drop item. First of all, we check if, they, if there actually is an item here. So if there is an item, whatever it is, in the position that we're at, then it checks if that item, so we want to check, this is a bit weird, because we want to check for the item and then in here we want to check at the inventory position at our position so we want to check the the value inside um, two seconds I just got some message I'm sorry so it want to you want to check you want to access the value the ID of the item that's inside of the inventory the uh, what was the, the inventory position at our position because if you just just do position here, if you check for position, that can be one to nine, and you might not have nine items. We do not. We don't have uh, three different. Um, so that means if we put in like two or three, it won't really work. So we need to access whatever number is stored in the inventory at that position, and then we're going to check if that item stat that use does not equal no one. So if it actually is a script, that's in there. If there is a script, then we're going to do a script execute of that again at the, the position, the, that item, and then the item start to use. So this executes that script that we stored in here. This script here, in this case, in the heel. So it'll use this script and execute it. And then we're going to subtract one from the amount. We're going to check if the amount is less than or equal to zero. And if it is, then the position will become uh, no one. So the inventory will be cleared again and then we're going to exit out of this script so um, the exit is just here to make sure that it doesn't show item has no use if the item actually has been used so a little thing you could do in here is actually because you might want to change this a bit because this one what this does is it removes the I one amount from the item no matter what use item it is so you might actually want to have like a sword that has a special ability, like, I don't know, some kind of power up that works, uh, that you can activate multiple times. Then you might actually not want to have this amount, uh, subtract from the amount because you don't want it to use. So instead of what you want to do is you want to go into this, the script that is being referenced here, the heal script in this case, and then you want to subtract one from the amount in there, and then check. That's just something to keep in mind so right now as this one is it will subtract one from the amount no matter what and it will always do it and to fix it you can just I think you would actually just be able to move this amount at position and put it into uh, the heel here let's just check it out let's see if it works 
So we're gonna fill up this. Got a potion. Uh, how do you use them again? Shift. Yeah, that works actually. So you can see it subtracts one from the potion, and it removes it and everything because we have one in here. And then if we had something else that wasn't a potion that we don't want to be used, then we just don't include the uh, subtraction of the amount. So that's pretty easy, and that is all you have to do to make this work. Then of course I have a draw event that just draws everything out. Um, you can see right here. It just goes, it again loops through 0 to 9, and then it checks if the inventory is populated with something, then it's going to draw text, add a position depending on the I value, and then it's going to draw the text that we find inside of that item, and the item name, so if it's sword, we're going to access this one, the item name, so that's why you set that to sword or potion. It's very important that you remember to put the uh, semicolons, no, that's not semi quotation mark sorry around this because it has to be a string and then otherwise if there's nothing in there it just draws empty at the same spot and then under those it draws the string amount yeah, or it draws the amount so you use string the fun string function and then take amount to turn the amount from a real number into a string so it can display it and then I've just used a draw text to do like this little arrow and then the HP, so that's pretty simple and all. But that's actually all there is to this inventory system. It's not a whole lot, and it's pretty easy. It works really well, and you can use it for like an RPG or whatever you want. You can of course have like a, a variable that is uh, like an active, an active variable, and you can set that to false or true, and then you can use that to uh, like shift between the code. So. Uh, Make sure, like, if it's not active, then you don't want to be able to access the inventory, it won't show anything. And if it is active, you will show everything. So that's basically it. I really hope you can use this. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure to just hit me up, ask me, I'll do my best to uh, answer them. And uh, just make sure to have a nice day. That's been all for this time. Goodbye.